packed up my bags and moved to Hollywood. Gonna find my fame in that neighborhood. Hi, gang. Wow. Welcome back to Dina6 TV. Another episode. What a crazy day. We had school online today. We had a town hall meeting with all the, you know, the all the teachers and all the students. So I just got done with that. It's like nine o'clock Sunday night. Now it's time to sit down and talk with you guys and get another episode of Dina6 TV out. Hopefully, 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 hopefully. Oh, I, I usually edit over at the school, over at the studio, but it closed tonight. So I'm trying to use my laptop, so I'm not sure if it'll export, but it's okay. If it doesn't, my friend of mine, James, is lending me one of his computers and him and his husband put like tons of RAM in it. So he'll drop it off tomorrow. So if I can't export it, I'll get it a little late, but I still have another great episode of Dina6 TV. I have Danny Arondo. We went to school together. He's an amazing DP. I'm gonna put his reel up there, but he also shot Faith Through the Storms. I mean, we had 12 shoot days and he, you know, we had, it was a lot, a lot of work and Danny showed up, you know, he shot the entire film. So drone shots, steady cam shots, you know, outdoor shots. Uh, he was fantastic. And he also shot a documentary of mine too. So Danny, you rock. He got a chance to travel all over the world and he just, he's, just really doing well and I'm so glad that you agreed to be on Dina6 TV this week. What a pleasure, Danny, and it was so nice to see your face and, you know, keep on trucking, keep on doing your thing. You get better and better. Not that you weren't great to start, but you keep getting better and better. So congratulations. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Danny. I'm a filmmaker from Miami. Dina, thank you so much for posting my reel to this week's episode of Dina6 TV. Um, really, I'm really excited to see how it comes out. Background on the reel. Um, the reel was just some footage, uh, some projects that I took on last year. I did a, a lot of traveling last year and I had a, uh, you know, a few unique projects. It was very exciting. Um, last year was a big growth year for me. I did a lot of traveling and working with some pretty influential people. So I had a lot of fun projects that took me around to London, Paris, Morocco, LA. Um, and so this reel is basically a compilation of all the footage that I thought was pretty, pretty captivating. Um, so take a look. It's exciting. I hope you like it as much as, as I do. And hopefully this motivates a lot of filmmakers to continue to put out work and a lot of good, powerful content because uh, we're living in some times right now that us as filmmakers, I think we need to remain conscious of just putting out a lot of inspirational messages and positive, uplifting content. All right, guys. Jason Renabu, he's a comedian. He's been on the show before, but he posted this video. It's a comedy about uh, cleaning the house with his wife, you know, for the, the for the coronavirus right now. So it's funny. 
and we all need to keep our sense of humor. So it's, I'm gonna put that up as well. You know, we gotta keep it light, lighten it up a little bit, super, super tense, super scary time. So nothing like a little coronavirus comedy. There's literally nothing on TV, not even golf. There's other things on television besides sports. Like what, the news? How else are you gonna get coronavirus updates? Corona.com? What are you doing in there anyway? Cleaning. You have to make sure that everything in the house is completely sterilized. It actually took a global pandemic for her to start cleaning the kitchen. It took a global pandemic for him to stop scratching his nuts and watching sports. All day. Thank you, take out the trash, please. We're not supposed to leave the apartment, babe. Remember? The quarantine? You don't have to social distance yourself from the dumpster. It's not that I don't like taking out the trash. I don't like my neighbors. Oh, hey Jenny. How are you? I had school today and we got a chance to Zoom with Amanda Rowe. She's a TV and film director. She's been in the industry. Her, she started making films when she was 10 years old. She told her parents she wanted to be a filmmaker. They said, okay, she had this little camera. And she's a very, very successful uh, TV and film director. She actually tried to go on hiatus for the TV. And, you know, this coronavirus stuff started. So, you know, she's gonna be able to transition over to film a lot different than she thought. IMDB is just full uh, of things that she's done and it was fantastic to hear her. And I so I shot the, uh, the Zoom video, so I'll let her tell a little bit about herself and about the industry and how she got into the uh, directing business. She lucked out and uh, I'm so happy she did because it's not that easy for all of us, so. Well, and, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of these students right now, they're, um, they're in the middle of thesis projects or just projects in general, and they don't have access to the equipment anymore. They don't have access to the school, and they can't even leave their home, some of them. So I'm just thinking, take this opportunity to do to do something. You, you're, you've been so great. I mean, it's so perfect to just say, you've got an iPhone. What else what can you do? I Whenever any show that I go on to, I like because all directors are different, right? Like I'm kind of like Pokeroo. I don't see other directors. I'm just kind of like I go in once and another one leaves, and I'm kind of like winging it. Like this is just the way that I view it. And um, honestly, I my mantra is always embrace the limitations. So limitations is often what makes it so good because you had to figure out how to do it. Like. Why was Jaws so good? Because the shark didn't work. So you never saw the shark, but people loved that. You know, like that's what made the movie so iconic was because the shark didn't work. And it's it's like, there's so much that we can sense as like viewers, as an audience, when we're watching something, we don't necessarily know what it is, but we, we know that there's more to it because a limitation has been embraced. I don't really know how to explain it, but it gives it more of a pointed perspective. Being a director on a movie for you, as opposed to when you show up to do a different episode for TV. There's a difference, but it's very minor. Um, the, but the, the through line is that I'm not to sound morose or anything, but I'm, I'm alone, you know, I'm the, I'm the boss. I'm here to make sure everything is going well. When I'm on a TV show, I'm like literally like here I'm in Atlanta for three weeks, and then I'm in Vancouver for another three weeks, and then I'm on another set in Vancouver for three weeks. Everything's in Vancouver, um, and uh, I'm constantly meeting new crews all the time. But I'm always living out of a suitcase, and I always live in hotels, and that's something that no one tells you in film school. But it is a very real reality of being a director. You have to be like chill with not having a home base ever like i'm sure even very established directors like steven spielberg are still traveling constantly like you kind of have to be okay with doing that and being the director being the one that everyone goes to for answers for help that also creates a certain distance as well 
Um, so it's good to, when you're in film school, like I did, fortunately, is to make all of those relationships, solidify them, and hold on for dear life because you're not going to have time to make them later, really. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. My, my husband's a cinematographer, and he's lived so you know, know. five months in Atlanta, and he makes that hotel room look like home just because he's there for so long. But I know. I bring, I bring decorations with me. <laughs> good, good, yeah. Because I have um, to. <laughs> I bet. Um, but uh, do you feel like as a director, there are certain things that you need to learn, like, um, or maybe there's certain directors have different kind of skills. Like some people say, well, I'm really more of an actor's director. Or I mean, really, like, do you feel like you have to know the technical stuff that, that well? I mean, what do you feel like yeah. for you to do the job work? You do, you do need to know, okay, you don't need to know, like, the newest camera body that came out and, like, what they can do, like, all, like, if you try to keep up with that stuff, like, you've literally got to look, like, every week because it's constantly changing. You need to know the foundation. You need to know your lenses. You need to know what aperture is. You need to know your focal length. You need to know, uh, I have an acronym, but it's kind of rude. No, go ahead. Okay. Girl, but... It's called phallus, and it's spelled wrong, <laughs> but it's basically <laughs> focus length, aperture, lens lens size, ISO, shutter speed. If you know how all five of those things interact with each other, that's all you need. What the various technology can do and stuff in terms of like what's capturing that image, that's those are the five things that you need to know. There's other things that are like what a crane is versus what a steady cam is versus what a dolly track is, but all of those things are straight up experience. You will not know any of that until you've shot something on a dolly, shot something on a steady, shot something handheld, shot something on a drone, and shot something on a crane to know how all of those shots feel differently. As long as your motive is to tell stories and to story tell, um, then then you're golden and I've seen many different like I'm constantly learning when I like I'm every time I go on a show there's a director shooting while I'm prepping so I try to be around that director who's shooting because it's just a random job and like the, the tasks are always different you know like last week I had to have someone like climb into a well the week before that I had to have someone like like fly off of a cliff like all of these things are unique instances, and I don't know if they'll ever be repeated, but I had to figure out how to do them. It, it, is, such, it is such an experience-based job. Every single show that I do gives me a new situation, whether I'm underwater or, you know, like there's, it's, it's storytelling. Who knows what the hell people are going to ask you to do. Another episode of Dina 6 TV. So happy and proud to keep going and uh, submit your content. You know, send me an email, dina6tv at gmail.com. I would love to show your work. And uh, it's important and, uh, and it's an honor. I look a little tired because I've been going all day, but you know what? I'm doing the deal and, and, and I know you are too. And, and I love you, gang. And, be strong and, and be light, stay funny, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye, gang.